Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Christine and I'm pleased to present for the first time ever the Money Planets forecast for November 2023 and in this one we're going to talk about all the outer planets. Now this is the first time that I have ever done an astrological forecast. I have been a student of astrology for about 15 years and I, but I've never offered anything as a professional astrologer and I'm excited about these videos. And also some of you, most of you are going to go through some financial changes with Pluto and Aquarius. Many of us have already been through these changes with the pandemic. Some of you will become entrepreneurs. Some of you will retire and become entrepreneurs. Some of you will be working to transform the landscape of working for other people. Um, we're seeing this with collective bargaining, returning things to a state of balance over time. Aquarius is about the collective and the, you know, the people out there and doing what's best for everyone instead of just what's best for a few people, which we're, we've seen economically that a lot of things have benefited just a small number of people versus a lot of other people going without. All that's changing. And we're seeing that too with this narrative about you know going back to the office and so on but the point is is that many of us myself included are going through money changes and it's frightening because we're kind of leaving behind this old paradigm where uh, the money we earned was married to what we did in the workplace and with the patriarchy collapsing because Pluto's almost finished in Capricorn the patriarchy is dead and we no longer need to do a lot of things we used to have to do or that our ancestors did. So this is a super uncomfortable time. I'm going through this right now, transitioning. All the parasitic people have been removed from my life and I'm transitioning back to being completely independent again and it's terrifying. Now remember, this is only based on money planets. If you don't know your money planets, you can read my blog post on how to do it yourself and figure this out. I may get into more in depth on finding your money planets yourself, depending on, um, you know, what happens. I also offer an inexpensive service to do this for you. And you can also get some additional tiers that include um, a 12 month forecast for you. So this is also only based on transits. And that's the current movement of the planets. So this is different than the usual YouTube astrological reading because it's not sign by sign. Your sign, oddly enough, your sign has nothing to do with the planetary aspects for this particular way of using astrology. Really all that matters is that your money planets are making aspects to one another within a seven degree orb so within seven degrees away so there's 30 degrees in a sign and so if your money planet is at 10 that means between three degrees and 17 degrees there's a pretty good window for a trigger event or opportunities to add some financial abundance now it's not always piles of money sometimes it's smaller things sometimes somebody might buy you lunch but you will only find this out by observing what happens in your own experience so and there may be more aspects to your natal planets so consider ordering the service or for reading or get a couple of coaching sessions and i'll just teach you how to do this yourself and then you can track your own cosmic cash flow periods that's what i ended up doing was taking a class so we're going to talk about the outer planets, all of them, in one video because they don't move very much. The outer planets move slower than the personal planets, so they usually make longer term aspects through their transit. So because they don't move as much, it's more likely that the personal planets or the inner planets, the sun, the moon, the Mercury, Venus, and Mars are going to aspect them more often and that's why there are detailed videos for all of the other planets so I have three examples for you in 2021 we had a transit Saturn and Aquarius squaring 
Uranus, transit Uranus in Taurus. Now that lasted about a year because of the cycles of each of those planetary movements. So essentially what happens in a transit is you have, normally you have three passes, but sometimes you can have more than that. So the first transit is sort of like the shot across the bow. You become aware of something that you need to deal with. And then the planet goes retrograde so there's a second pass and by that time you're usually well on your way to integration and then by the retrograde the third pass the retrograde pass you're done with the lesson whatever it is it wraps up and moves out of your experience now in this particular case we're talking about two slow moving outer planets with very different retrograde cycles so it may not exactly be like that but I think you get the picture a second example, if you're a Cancer with late degree placements like mine, you're finishing up a long opposition from Pluto. Now transit Pluto made five passes over the opposition point. So it went direct for the first hit, then went retrograde, then went direct again, went retrograde over it again, and then made the last and final pass. Now. Some of these outer planets are, you know, the smaller ones are supposedly the, the most powerful one so Pluto went direct and then went retrograde again and got under within two degrees that's close enough to feel the influence returning and that was an interesting experience and that just happened and so that sort of coincided with my um, dealing with the corruption of the father as I Ching would call it so I dealt with my mom's issues in the first four passes and then I had to do some do some serious digging with the problems related to my dad and the men in my family. So here's a third example. Right now I have transit Neptune squaring natal Venus. There have also been five passes over the degree of the square. And this one is just about wrapping up. Neptune is also trying my Sun in Cancer as well, so it kind of balances out the Pluto influence. So in this video, I'm only talking about transits that everyone's experiencing as a collective. And like I said, there may be some more opportunities in your own where transit planets aspect your natal planets. And that can also bring more opportunities for money. So here are the important things to know about the outer planets as they relate to money in November. Let's talk about Saturn. So Saturn's in retrograde at the time I'm writing this. It goes direct in Pisces at zero degrees on November 4th. Mars and the Moon both make aspects to Saturn in November, so be sure to look at those posts. Now if you've had trouble creating structure and stability in your life, I know that's certainly been the case for me, watch for this situation to shift. Now here's the tricky part. If you're on the right track, you'll begin to see things restabilize in a positive direction and the timeline you're on will continue. Now, I hate to say this, but if things are not going in the in a good direction for you, in other words, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you kind of know if this is happening, sometimes you don't, but again, there's no judgments here, right? We're all in, in various stages of our evolutionary process. But if things are breaking down before Saturn goes retro goes direct, there's a very good possibility it's not going to get any better. So if you notice things on an uptick before Saturn goes direct, that means it's going to solidify in a positive manner, meaning you're going to stay on that timeline. And if it's breaking down, you're going to get an opportunity to make room for a better path for you. So if your situation breaks down, take heart. You're not being punished. You're actually being assisted by the universe and getting realigned. Note that there are a lot of things happening right now that are bad, and the truth is that there are probably things that we were programmed to see as normal or that we did as an adaptation to circumstances that we had little power to change. And also many of those things that we did to numb out were, were very bad for us, and we have to stop doing a lot of those things now. We don't need to do those things now because the patriarchy is dead and these distortions and perversions of our reality are ending. So it may seem like there's nothing left of your old life, and that's true. It doesn't mean that some of these things won't come back, but um, we have to be in a space, an in-between space, I think, in order to 
really take a look at these things and decide if they're good for us or not. So I find myself frustrated frequently because I just don't see things I like to do as being bad but almost anything can be used to numb out from reality and having this awareness of how you escape from doing the inner work is beneficial. I don't think it's going to stay like this forever. Um, Also, this is another one of the reasons for sharing this information is that there's really no competition anymore. You are innately worthy of abundance because you exist. And I hope this information will help you see the abundance in your life. And it can absolutely come from other ways besides working in a shitty job you hate or from staying stuck in a bad relationship where you're financially dependent on someone. Latch on to your money planets and start working on a plan to extricate yourself. And if you don't, it's possible Pluto in Aquarius will do it for you. So no fear, no judgment. Let's talk about Jupiter. This is interesting in November because the only aspects I see in November to Jupiter are from the moon. So generally, if the planets aren't making aspects, there typically isn't much happening. Also, Jupiter is in retrograde. And combined with this and the lack of aspects, it's probably making it harder for Jupiter to dispense its riches. And it may stay like this for a little while because Jupiter goes direct, doesn't go direct until December 30th. So if both the moon and Jupiter are planets, money planets for you. Sorry, I got hung up there. There's potential for money. So make sure you see the blog post in the video on the moon for more on the aspects to Jupiter by the moon this month. Because those will be your main opportunities if Jupiter is your money planet for you. It's not one of mine, and um, Jupiter Jupiter always seems to over under promise and over <laughs> what is it? under under pro, over promise and under deliver. Jupiter just sometimes brings overwhelm for me, which I find super interesting. Otherwise, if you don't see anything, if the Jup- if Jupiter and the Moon are are not both money planets, I don't see much happening in the transits. Look to your other money planets for ways to make money. And like I said, you could check your natal planets as well. Let's talk about Uranus. So Uranus is in retrograde in Taurus for the entire month of November. The Mars, Moon, sorry, Mars, the Moon, and Mercury make all make aspects to Uranus in November. So check out those videos and blog posts for more information. Next up is Neptune. So Neptune is retrograde in Pisces for the whole month of November. The Moon, Mercury, and Mars all make aspects to Neptune. So take a look at those videos if Neptune is a money planet for you. Pluto. Now Pluto just went direct, thank the goddess, and will be direct for the month of November. Mars, Venus, Mercury, and Moon all make aspects to Pluto this month. So see those blogs and videos for more information. Now I just realized in writing this that there are many planets retrograde right now which might be why it seems so frustrating to get any traction related to moving forward so when all the personal planets are direct you have an open window of forward movement so that's why another good reason to pay attention to these transits the more personal planets money planets however you want to describe them are forward and moving and in signs where they're well received the better chance you have for forward movement and prosperity now remember forewarned is forearmed and this information is to empower you to see the abundance in your own life there are many opportunities for money in November they just may not all be super comfortable but I hope this makes it easier for you to relax and allow things to unfold for you or to be intention intentional about aligning with your money planet transits. You of course have to create per, participate in the process, but you don't have to do all the work yourself. Using your natal chart and your money planets is a fantastic way to remind yourself that the creator has given us all tools to thrive regardless of the external circumstances. You are given a lot of abilities and ways of thriving 
it's in your stars. So check out Cosmic Cash Flow to learn more about your personal prosperity cycles. Thanks for liking, watching, sharing, subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.